minus 20 seconds. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, I am joined by Mike, a man whose lips are so big he can whisper in his own ear. And I'm joined by Carl, a man who's bilingual, he can speak English and over women whose voice he doesn't value. So that's nice. Um, <laughs> so I didn't today... know I had that skill. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. They were both vetoed in the meetings that we've had prior to this, so I said them anyway. <laughs> so anyway, right, oh, today we are taking a look at the Two Trees TS220 Watt Laser Engraver. You can see there's a lot of boxes here. So, um, so in this, we've got pretty much everything you could ask for. So but these three boxes are the laser. Then we have, as if by magic, a honeycomb bed that is actually the size of the laser engraver. So that's a nice touch. That's a nice win. Only been waiting, only been waiting, what? Four years since we had yeah. the first uh, laser engraver on this channel. No, not quite four years. I think about what? two and a half, three, three years. years, I think, since we had the first laser engraver on the channel. And we've finally got a honeycomb. That means I'm not going to burn my, my uh, I'm not going to set my um, Or you, you move the honeycomb fire. round, trying yeah. to get everything on it. Chasing it. We have, so we have got a power supply. Unfortunately, that power supply, once again... It's an American power supply. And the other day, you threw away the uh, adapter. I didn't throw away the adapter. I moved the adapter somewhere incredibly safe. No, you uh, threw it in the bin. I didn't throw it in the I'm bin. I'm not using it a good one. No more. I refuse to, and you threw it in the bin. I do not remember doing that, but it does I, sound I like the sort of thing that I someone like me would do. It does sound like something James would do. I was there. I was standing there when he did it. I'll not lie. It does. It does sound. It does sound like something I would do. What well, it sounds uh, like something you would do because it was something you did. I mean, I'm looking around, and that does seem to check out. So fair enough. Like, <laughs> have you so outside of that, we've then got. So these are. So hold on. Let's go to here. So this box here. This is the. Let's just make that big. Hold on. There we go. This is the extended feet. So this machine has a rotary tool on it so that you can laser engrave on. Um, so you can laser engrave on uh, bottles and glasses. glasses and things like that. So to do that, you need the extended feet so that you can raise the whole machine up and speak of the devil in here. We've got the TR2 Pro laser uh the rotary tool so if i pop there's just this so many boxes in, for this laser aren't there there's a lot of boxes for this laser. yeah, yeah. yeah they, when, when i seen the emails like how many boxes are we going to get for this it's yeah crazy. but it was it's a lot it's a lot of, it's a lot of boxes so we've got those this little uh this little number here this little travel case i'll point out has within it something you'd never travel with which is a uh an air assist <laughs> I have absolutely no idea why this is in a travel case, but this has got, so this is something you'll see as a repeating theme around this particular um, printer, which is a nice solid painted black and then anodized red is their accent color. Um, this is an adapted um, nozzle for the laser that goes on with the new safety shield as well that allows you to attach the hose to the uh, to the air assist to it. So this will go. And, and this is you. what's happening with lasers now, isn't it? Like when when you have the first one, like the Atom Stack, it yeah. just came with the laser and, and the frame. Yeah. And that was it. Now that that I think companies like Creality and Two Trees are starting to realise, you know, the bigger companies send air assist. 
or the yeah, Apple's absolutely. Name. This laser is a complete system. It's enclosure. Yeah. Everything, it's, everything it's, that's it's here is everything you'd expect there to be. So again, this is all the tubing and everything for this. And it does come with a price tag as well. It doesn't come with what? It does it come with a price tag having everything like this. Yes. Yeah. So let's just pull up the Two Trees website and we'll take a look at what we're looking at here. So if you buy the Two Trees laser with everything on it, right? That we've got here. Which is what we've got here. There is a touch screen that comes with, that you can get as well. I want to be clear that touch screen is an MKS TFT 35. Um, yeah. It doesn't come in a case. So it's just a bare screen, right? Panel. Now, so to be a fair, case for if you want it, that is exactly what it says on the website. If you look on the website at the touch screen, it is literally just a, a bare touch screen that you just plug in with the cables. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I'm not going to fit it. One, I have a 3D printer. That's what this channel is primarily about, contrary to the amount of lasers that we've had recently. Um, so I have a 3D printer, but a number of people who are buying lasers don't have a 3D printer. Secondly, having the touchscreen encourages, in my opinion, to do offline three, uh, uh, laser engraving where you're not using uh, light burn and connecting it to a laptop or whatever. Um, I don't agree with that way of laser engraving. I think you remove a bunch of safety features that are built into um, light burn. People have stopped being safe. And, and I, think, I think it's going to compromise the safety a little bit. I prefer the control of having light burn, being able to issue kill commands and everything else. So I'm, I'm not going to be using the touchscreen on this particular one. But in here, we have something that's a little bit interesting so this is believe it or not a full enclosure kit so in here you have a folded down fabric um laser engraver with a hose and an extractor fan so this has got this has got a full enclosure along with an extractor and an extractor fan for that vent. So that is something that's been sorely missing on really any of the machines that we've been reviewing up until now. And I finally feel like the place we're getting to is a machine that I can say isn't trying to actively burn the house down. Yeah. Right. So not so a machine that you can. Yeah. Yes. Not a machine that you can leave unattended. Because but it isn't going to burst into flames while you're standing there. And it isn't yeah. going to objectively just burst into flames. Right. It's got the honeycomb to protect the tabletop that it's on. It's got the enclosure and the extraction to mean whatever you're engraving or cutting, you can get those nasty carcinogenics out the window. Like there's a lot to this that I feel like is actually a really good a really good deal for the amount that you're paying. Now, yep. right now, the whole bundle is on sale for $1,037. But the normal price of this is 1804 So, 1800 pounds for this laser with everything in it. The touchscreen, the rotary tool, the, 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 the honeycomb, the... the, 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 the in great the air assist and the uh and the enclosure all of that all in 1800 pound it's a big chunk of change when you consider that at 2000 pounds you start getting into enclosed sort of cheaper um co2 lasers at that point so you yeah. are starting to touch on some you know you're starting to touch at a point where Actually, there's a lot of competition in that space. So with that in mind, let's get some of this stuff out of the box and we will start taking a look at how this bad boy goes together. So if we go back to the, the overhead camera, going to catch this? Yeah, just about. I'll flip it around. So 
you can see here that you get a nice thick product manual that we're almost definitely not going to read, but it's nice to pretend, isn't it? Um, this just shows... A flame operate. Oh, okay. A flame sensor is on this. There's a protective cap that goes over the flame sensor, so you need to make sure you take that. So the flame, the alarm function can be switched on without removing the protective cover when indoors or outdoors. When unattended, the protective cover needs to be removed to activate the fire alarm function. Okay, fair enough. There's then. Oh, I don't care. There's then. Uh, there's then. Yeah, this is just how you put it all together. This is where it all screws in and all that stuff. It is a kit, so you're not just getting this out of the box and off you go like you do with the Falcon. So interestingly, you, you can actually the power purchase, supply for. Sorry, go on. It can actually. I've just seen on their website you can purchase a 30 watt laser module for this. 30 watts, and it is eight hundred dollars on its own. I'll be honest and say, right, that so lasers do have a lifespan, right? They, they, they do have a certain thousand hours or I'm pretty sure most lasers are about 10 to 12, 10 to 15,000 hours of engraving, which to be clear is a lot of engraving, right? Especially because you can't really leave these machines unattended. Yeah. Um, but a hundred pounds replace the thing that makes it a laser. That's not terrible. Would you say it was a hundred pound or no, eight hundred? Seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Oh, okay. Well, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I thought you were a bit of non joint about it. Yeah, if you need to replace it. <laughs> a thirty yeah, watt. That's though. more. Yeah, that's more. That's a lot more. And um, side note, the power supply that I was uh, that I was engrossed that I was aggrieved about, and um, this power supply is obviously for the. Um, it's for the air assist, not for the laser itself, because the laser itself has got this one. So there's at least that. Yeah, so you can have power is... for the laser, the air assist, the, the enclosure. Uh, excellent question. Potentially. Because I suppose it would do, yeah. Yeah, because the fans need to run on the enclosure. Yes, the fan goes on the back of the enclosure. Unless... And that's an extractor fan. Unless it connects to this laser machine somehow. Otherwise, you can't see free it doing. Three plugs. Oh, well, I get you. What, like, you. You could run it off the unit. You mean you could run a power yeah, off the unit? Possibly. I don't it's possible, it yeah. I mean, the power on the end of that is. So let me just have a look. What power supply is this? This is a 12 volt, 3 amp. Let's just have a look in my. We've got loads of power supplies and we've never once found the one we need when we need one. Always the way. 24 volt 4 amp. I feel like the one you're looking for is the exact one we needed for one of our lights and we never had. Yeah, it does sound about right, doesn't it? I'm sure it's the same one. Twelve volt six amp. 12 volt 6 amp. Do we reckon 12 volt 6 amp would work, or am I just. What's this one? That one's. No, 24 volt 4. Oh, that's a big one. What's this? So, Dell's logo that I um, was used on the big Iron Man, isn't it? 7.42. Nineteen volt two. Every volt needed, but the one. Yeah, I know that's the twelve one volt we need five. To... Twelve volt five will do it, I reckon. Ah, close enough. Now we just got to find out if it's the right connector on the end. Ha 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 ha! Victory! Right. Well, wait, we're wait, already wait. abusing the system, and we're not even built it yet. So. <laughs> Let's get this bit out. So, one feature I do really like about this already, this has this um, this guard on the front here, which means that when this laser is facing you, there is the guard that is on the laser itself. 
and there's also this guard to mean that there's a little bit of protection from light. Still, obviously, have to wear safety glasses, still have to make sure that you're being careful. And to be fair, if you are being careful with a laser, then there really isn't a reason why it should just randomly decide to betray you. But the problem is, is that I'm safety that. in these cases is it's just so important. You, you don't get second chances with these machines. If you make a mistake and these um, and these lasers end up going wrong, they end up firing a laser at your eye or whatever, then you're just going to go blind. It's, <laughs> like there really it's, isn't, it's, there really it's isn't even, a second shot at this. But it's not just that, though, is it? Because, like, I my atom stack literally set fire to my wasteboard. Yeah. That was only a, that's a five watt output. What's yeah. a twenty watt output going to be like? Well, it's going to do exactly watt. the same, just quicker. <laughs> Four times quicker. You know, and it is. So it's, this is the. This is the laser, and that looks to me like it's already got. I don't know if you can see on this. So this here looks to me like this has already got. A, um, a hole for an air assist to go in, as well yeah. as this nozzle that's on the end here looks like that as well. So it's possible that this air assist is also used for one of their other models and it requires you to change the, uh, change the tool head on it because that, to me, looks like this has already got the ability to take an air assist yeah. without, having to, um, without having to change the end. So that's going to save us a little bit of faffing about, which is good. The new laser god in the making. I hate well said. Well, I was going to say, I, I should be, and I, I've said this really to quite a few sponsors as well. I don't like lasers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop sending them to us. <laughs> and then they go, we've sent you this. We, oh, they, they, we, when, when True Trees messaged us about this, they just gave us the tracking information. So we'd obviously we'd already done the um, the Sapphire Pro, which we're in the process of um, doing some some upgrades on at the moment. Um, and after we'd done the review of that, they literally just messaged us and said, "Hey, here's the tracking for our new laser." And we was like, "Oh, um, we don't like lasers." And they are like, "Yeah, but you'll like this laser." And that felt like a threat, so we said we were going. <laughs> so we said we we said, all right, I guess we're I guess we're reviewing the laser again. <laughs> then. Right. That's box number two done. So so far we've got the front. This has got to be the back because this has got the um, this has got the. Y motor on it, I assume. And then this. So again, this is packed really nicely. And what right? I do like about this is it has got rulers built on to the frame. Yes. So there's rulers built onto this, onto the whole frame. And then again, there's also rulers on, there's rulers on, um, on this honeycomb. And it's not just the honeycomb. There's then also the steel back to that to mean that you can put that under the honeycomb. This honeycomb also comes with these. So these are little rivets that push into the honeycomb that can hold your material down. So you haven't got to worry so much about... Um, Warping. Yeah, you haven't got to worry so much about uh, all the different yeah, about things parts moving, moving on around it. or anything. And apparently the honeycomb actually improves the cut as well. Phil, if it I can believe the, that, if it was the chocolate printer company, Phil, you just know it wouldn't work, so you wouldn't have to worry. <laughs> yeah, save us a lot of time. It'd just be us having the a live stream, shoot throwing, throwing something in the bin or something. Yeah, just be us throwing something in the bin. Just a bigger thing to throw in the bin. Yeah. Right, right so we've got the front there. We've then got the. Chelsea are one nil up. Who scored? Sterling. 
Did you see that video the other day of Sterling? The kids mimicking him at school. In fact, he's running. No. Oh, it was on. I think it was on. Um, is it Lad's Bible or something like that? Yeah. Uh, and the kids were taking the piss out of the way he runs. Yeah, yeah he does run funny. Yeah. He wasn't impressed. <laughs> Don't run like it then. I know. Oh, yeah. It was <laughs> like... funny. It does, it was funny. does feel like you've opened yourself up to it. If you're going to run like a weirdo. But if you've been paid 200 grand a week, people can do what they are. They like about me. So this is a point if I've paid, paid 200 before, grand a week, right? I wouldn't care who took the piss out of me. Yeah. So this is this is the difficulty, right? So uh, we've had like I've had this conversation with people before. It's really difficult often to care when footballers complain really about anything. Because like um so there's a lot of footballers who say that that fans are really abusive to them in the stands. And I was like, if I was paid 40 grand a week, I'd stay afterwards to listen to each of their individual insults. And then after they finished insulting me, I'd just show them how big my house was. <laughs> I'd just be like, look, I've literally married a Brazilian model. She doesn't grand grand a week. You'd be in the championship at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'd just be like, I'd just be like, I'll just, I'll, I'll stay for an hour after every game, and I'll just listen to the complaints they've all got. And afterwards, I just go, my Brazilian model wife doesn't even speak English. Who's got a terrible life here? <laughs> <laughs> but she does have a cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You won't be with her for her cooking. Let's be honest. I was no. going to say, yeah, that wouldn't be the first. I wouldn't be like, oh, do you know how to make, do you know how to make like a Thai curry or something? I married her because her cooking's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure everyone would believe you as well. No one would be like, "Yeah, it doesn't sound, that doesn't sound true." Right, so these are around the wrong way then already. This one goes over here. James put that looks like a lot of parts. It is. It's this is a lot of building for James. It must be complicated because he's already reading the instructions. <laughs> I'm just making sure stuff's laid out where it needs to go. Like I don't want to. Um... I've been accused in the past of making some very rash decisions about things. That I then have to spend time that. going back and fixing. Well, it's only really every time you have to build something. Yeah, <laughs> or any time that I have to open anything or. Or do anything and see, look, that's already, that nearly fell off the side there. So that's me already letting myself down. See, now I've given this precious little time and I'm already intensely frustrated with the fact I can't get this little bit of saran wrapping off. Phil's seen the video, yeah, it is hilarious. What was so funny. I saw there was a picture of a there was a picture of a goalkeeper i don't know which goalkeeper it was where he'd like he'd like jumped on the ball or something and everybody's just started photoshopping cats uh they're taking that they're taking the ball out from where he's hugging it on the floor and they've just put cats in instead so he's yeah. just on the floor hugging a bunch of cats they're funny them ones those, those photos they do they're quite amusing <laughs> I, ha I hate the videos, you know, where there's proper injuries. They're the oh. ones. Did you see that one in Brazil? With Mas is it, um... Yeah, I said oh. it to James. Oh. Um... oh, I saw it once by mistake. I felt ill. Yeah, it's, it was. Oh, it was just so bad. Marcelo. Yeah. Doing a Bruce Lee. Oh, that really turned my stomach. Just the video on the stretcher when they were taking him out. Our legs shouldn't look like that. No. <laughs> it just, you saw it and you was like, no, that's not it's right. It's like a normal leg had suddenly got elephantitis in every direction. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it was the fact it actually turned 180 degrees yeah. before we got on the floor. And it was just the other way. Oh, oh it was gruesome. so bad. So bad. That's why you eat your veg, kids. Too many years playing with uh, Pepe. Yeah, yes, <laughs> Mr. Snap. Pepe would have immediately gone for the second leg as well. Yeah, followed through. 
He, he's always played like that, though, Marcel, isn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah. He's always been on the edge. What's the engraving size on this? Is it 400 by 400? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Carl, I think the enclosure, the website? Yeah, and I think the enclosure is like 700 and something by something. It's 410 by 410. Said his leg looked like a kebab on a roaster. <laughs> So, so it's 410 by 410, and then the enclosure, I think it was 720. The enclosure is big, I know that much. See, that doesn't feel like that's right, because I feel like there's meant to be some pulleys that are on that. So the enclosure is 740 by 700 by 400. So that's too so big then. <laughs> two Short foot. answer is yes, it is large. Over two foot. No, yeah, over two foot on the square. And then four. That's quite big, that. Right, so we've got these. Yeah, it does look bigger, to be honest, James. Just trying to figure out whether or not there's some sort of extra be nice if I could pinch and zoom on this, but I can't. <laughs> Cause the instructions feel like they're a lot smaller than they probably should be. I could have sworn there was a little packet knocking about somewhere that had still in one of the boxes. No. That had like little pulleys on it, but I can't like, really. I've, I've got a sneaky feeling the fans on the enclosure actually will plug into the to that laser somehow. Right. Does it look well built? Yeah. Oh, I no. I mean, it's all. I mean, I'll be honest. Yeah, it does. It does look well built. It looks well put together. The anodizing is good. All the like the colors good. It's it's all. I've got, I've got, two, I've added two trees laser for about fourteen months, and they, they, they make them well. I think it yeah. was better quality than me, me Adam stat one I had. Yeah. All right, I've definitely got these around the wrong way, so that's fine. And I know they're around the wrong way because the pulleys are actually on them, so that would make a lot of sense. How come Chelsea haven't got a sponsor this year? They've been rejected, hasn't it? So they haven't actually put one forward yet. I thought they'd put one to the uh, to the league, and they said no. Well, they've put it forward, but I I hadn't heard whether it said no or. I like I like the um I like the badge and the kit this year. You know the holographic yeah. one. Yeah, looks nice. I actually like the shirt with no sponsor. Yeah, so do I. I have to say though, out of Arsenal's away. It's probably my favourite this year so far. The fluorescent one. Yeah, it, it pains me to say it, but yeah, I like it. Their kit's always nice at Arsenal, aren't they? They're waiting for Liverpool to find one so they can snatch that too. Probably true. But you might need a striker soon at Liverpool anyway because some Saudi team's after someone. Yeah. And he'll go for the money. Yeah. He knows a very rich man already. I love the way you said that, like you wouldn't. <laughs> like you'd have some sort of no, moral that one play, that one oh, player. I don't oh, think he oh. has I don't think he has very much loyalty. Yeah, some players so as, can so be really Phil quite just, loyal, but he's Phil not. Phil just one said of for 132 million. If you think I wouldn't come to your deathbed and slap you in the tip of your penis for 132 million pounds. You don't know me at all. <laughs> a million. A lot of people it. say that you can't buy loyalty, but you'd be astonished what you could buy from me for 132 million pounds. Yeah. The idea that 132 million pounds and someone's going to be like, oh no, I'm probably just going to stay with Arsenal. Like my dad used to like them, so I'm probably yeah. going to stay. Absolute nonsense. It's it's just what loose change they've got in their pockets, isn't it, with these Saudis? It is. Ridiculous. They just there's, there's no price cap on anything. They just don't care what it is. Just buy it. 
Like I put petrol in the car this morning and he fell over at one pound fifty one. It's gone up like eight p in less than a week. It's crazy. I'm waiting to be snatched up by a Saudi, but no, my luck, I'll be someone's lunch. Or their plaything. Yeah. But the thing is, all those players are going there. They're not actually living in Saudi. You what? So all them players that are going over to play there are not actually living in Saudi. Where are they living then? They're going across the border. Oh, what's the country called? Is it like Bahrain or something? Could be. Tell you now. So I'm going to be honest. What seemed originally to be quite uh, to be quite intimidating uh, actually isn't, and is really really easy. <laughs> and the only issue I'm having at the moment is getting this belt. Is it over... Qatar? Yeah, Qatar. Then... Yeah, Qatar. Some are going to the UAE. Yeah. Um. Because obviously those countries, well, the UAE allows alcohol, doesn't it? Mm. And you, you you have to be married to live with someone in Saudi Arabia, don't you? It's all right. Just marry the Brazilian model. Did you see there was that footballer who um, he married a, he married a woman and Hulk. she divorced Hulk. him. After he divorced like, her and married his daughter. Her daughter. No, 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 no. This woman, he married a model. She divorced him after about six months, and then uh, it tur it turned. She found out that all of his assets and all of his wages were in was his in mum's name, run by his mum. Yeah, I and read everything that. was in his mum's name. And in the end of it, she owed him alimony. Yeah, <laughs> despite the fact that he. That he earned like yeah. he, I was, read that. he was bringing home like silly money. Yeah, I read that a couple of months earning. ago. I thought that's clever. That it was Hulk, wasn't it? Who was married to a woman, split up with her, and then married her daughter. Yeah. Yes. Very strange. Pretty man. sure they were both Brazilian. <laughs> oh God. We can marry kids. It's being traded in for your daughter. Jesus. <sighs> oh, that's scary. Like you say, they live in their own bubble, these footballers. They've got no idea about anything in real life. So like they found... don't, but at the same time, they haven't just, it's not just sort of, it's not happenstance that they find themselves in that position, right? Like they've, that they, I mean, and I know a controversial opinion to imply that, um, that, that footballers have, have worked to get the money that they get, but they have. Yeah. I'll, I'll be perfectly like honest. They, 95 percent of Everton squad shouldn't be a Premier League footballer and shouldn't be earning over 40 grand a week, let alone 100 grand a week. In, in all well, fairness. I don't think you'll find many people argue with that statement. Like literally. Like, we've probably got a championship squad. Yeah. Uh, and they're being paid. We've got players on contracts that are like 140 grand a week, and they've not played for the team for two years. It, it's just crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But at least we've got a new ground being built that we'll never be able to go to because we can't afford it. Could rent it out to Chelsea. No, we're really lazy. No one would go all the way up there. It's crazy. Look safe. Liverpool is just not as safe as the King's Road, is it? Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to say the new ground at Everton's pretty safe because it's actually on, just on the outskirts of the city, so it's not too bad. But it is it is quite scary when you go. Oh, around it's just stuck in a bottleneck. There's only two ways to get out of the Everton New Grounds. Onto the main road, you go into the Mersey. A massive bottleneck, then. Yeah, I reckon there'd be a few away fans chucked in there at some point. Yeah, 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 
Yeah. What's well, asking for it? Having a river right next to it. Yeah. Then look at Liverpool. Then you stand can't be finished building because the company's gone into administration and all the walkers are, uh, workers are walked off. Refusing to finish the job. Put this on the wrong way round. I think. Yeah, because the ruler should be at the front. I think the no, ruler. No, sorry. No, this side. is the right way round. No, it is the right way round. The ruler is at the front. The ruler's here. This is zero zero. I was trying to figure out whether or oh, not right. this is whether or not I'd put this on the right way round than I have, so that's fine. So then those belts are all on. But that's not plugged in yet. And this isn't plugged in yet because we need to figure out how all of that stuff needs to go. So I'll figure that out in a minute. Um, then the motor is held in. For anyone on here who makes videos, so Phil, Girls Logos, Matt, seriously, you need to get yourself one of these keyboards. It's the greatest thing I've ever bought. So it runs for Premiere Pro. But instead of using your mouse and the keyboard, you just use this keyboard that's all dials and buttons. You program it how you want it. It cuts, it's cut my editing down to half the time. It's amazing. It was like 200 quid. You have to put a link in the in the, the chat now. Oh, good luck. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't actually think we can put links in the chat. I don't think StreamYard lets you. Uh, I can probably put it in YouTube, can't I? Give it a go. I don't know that you can, though. I don't know that you can. <sighs> Look at you guys getting all professional. Well, we've got a keyboard. I mean, let's calm it down about... <laughs> Start well, throwing Mike, about Mike's professional got a keyboard. words. Like. Let, let's, let's be honest, Mike's got a keyboard. Yeah, Mike's got a keyboard, yeah. And frankly, it's only to make his life easier. Right. Yeah, it, won't so, let you post it. it won't let you post it. No. No, I didn't think it would. Right, it say so, right, that's what it is. You can get it on Amazon. Oh, a loop deck. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Okay, so we've got that together. So let's just show the folks at home where we're up to. And let me just tighten a couple of these up. So it says it can cut 20 millimeter of plywood with one pass. It's not true. Which it's not true. Yeah. I mean that's that's not accurate. Like that's that's just not a true thing. <laughs> like anybody could say you that. can only get 18 mil plywood. So yeah. what the other two mil is, I don't know, unless they're putting a two mil bit on top of it. Yeah, there's 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 really uh there's really there's really no way that that's <laughs> That that's factually accurate. But um, yeah, that's Phil, have amazing. a look at that. There's loads of uh, videos on YouTube, um, reviews of that loop deck. Have a look at it. It's amazing. So that Works with be... After Effects and all the others as well, but we don't use them. So, so this bit. 
Jeez, oh. you can get an extension kit for this to make it 450 by 780. Which, look, if you've got really specific use cases, oh, I'll just saying that uh, Phil's donated. Thank you very much, Phil. Cheers, Phil. Um, so if you if you've got really specific use cases, then I then I get why you'd need that. But I challenge that the vast majority of people um, would not need something that would that would engrave like close to a meter. Like it's just yeah, it's just not it's just not something that the average that the that, that people really have been crying out for what they're crying out for for the most part is safe reliable lasers that do a good clean job in the space that you've got yeah i don't think there's many people at the moment who are crying out for um for being able to engrave like that to be fair but i'm just having a look here to try and figure out how a lot of this stuff's gonna go together so this is obviously the bit i could think of a use for this for you. Kitchen. Your new kitchen units you've fitted in your office. Yeah. You can engrave a honey badger on the front of them. Oh, yeah. That's true. I could do, yeah. Because you've got gloss ones, so it will oh. come out nice. Mm. Yeah. Like, you're doing that tomorrow. <laughs> got to build it first. Well, have you even put the doors on yet? Uh, No. <laughs> There you go. It's not even got the hinges on there. It's nice and flat. No handles. Put a big honey badger on the front of it. Great. Makes me want to go and buy some doors for my unit just to do it. You've got doors on your units, haven't you? No, I haven't. That big one there, I've just never bothered putting the doors on it. But now you've got a reason to put one on there. Well, yeah, I've got a reason to go and buy them. I've had the cabinet for three years. <laughs> Just never bothered buying any doors for it. That keyboard looks fancy, though. It's, keyboard it's so is good. fancy. It's so good. You just don't have to use your mouse. The only time you need your keyboard is if you want to type something. All the rest of it is done with dials and... Oh, okay. I see. This goes round here and then goes like that. Right. That makes sense. So if you are someone who uses Premiere, After Effects and Photoshop, this keyboard has actually got three layouts on it. So you can have one for Premiere, one for After Effects and one for Photoshop. And you have a layout for each one. Oh, you can get a live, a, a looper deck live. Yeah, I know it's got a nice fancy deck, like screen, color screen on it. Yeah, touch screen. Yeah. Jesus. And he's dropped the screw. I immediately found it. No one panic. It makes me look really important because I've got two keyboards in front of me as well. All right. <laughs> it makes but me look, look like. Keyboard. To anyone who doesn't know and was to come in here, make it look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Anyone who didn't know who you could, in, comes in and goes, could be forgiven <laughs> for thinking that, for sure. Like, it, it took me, like, two weeks to work out how to use it properly. And the rest. That's why you might notice all of a sudden we keep having loads of shorts videos. Because I just kept re-editing stuff, trying to work out how to yeah, use that, it. That is true, yeah. That's why we've had a lot of shorts on the channel lately. <laughs> so I reckon that is meant to go there. Which means this screws in. Like that. And we've also got a video coming out soon. I'm just printing some stuff off for it. A new resin that we've been using a long time. Well, for a good few months we've been using it for, but it's actually got a release date now. Yeah. So I'm printing some stuff out. The Ecto-1 that we've done, it's large amounts we've done in that. 
which is looking really good at the moment. It's what is a shame is it looks so good with the lights on that no one's ever going to see that. No, because when it goes I, to form next and things like that where it's a million watt bulbs everywhere. If you turned all the lights on, you wouldn't even know they was on. They should put <laughs> yeah, in. yeah, that they is should true. In a box. They should pull it in a box that you can just see through the front of it so it lights up. We could actually put it in a shadow box. Yeah. So that you can still see it, but yeah. you can... Hit the button and you'll see... You can hit the, the button and, and like the, the, the shadow box would... All right, so this is your X motor. It does look I, good in the dark as well. well so I have just took apart I had an Iron Man arm that lit up and stuff like that. But in there yeah. were the controls to add um, wireless for your phone and a speaker so that you can play stuff on your phone, connect to it via Bluetooth. Oh, God. And play stuff. All I've got to work out is what all these pieces are because I never wired it up. Somebody else did. <laughs> I just need to work out what all these pieces are. And, and then uh, have Ghostbusters playing. Or even siren noise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> be honest, it'd just be quicker to say it's never going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's, is quicker. That's not a lot of steps that you're talking because about. What I'll do is I'll look at it, not understand it, bring it around to James. We'll both then look at it, not understand it, and then say this is not going to work and just put all the stuff in the yeah, door. That sounds, that sounds exactly like what's going to happen, to be honest. Sounds exactly like what's going to happen. Well, you can, you See, can do it while you're doing this the This has actually got this has got something I've not seen before, which is it's got a Z motor. So it's so that implies that you can actually it's from, automatic. Yeah, that you can auto well, it's not going to be an automatic leveling because there's not oh no, I suppose it's like a little depth sensor there. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is. It's um what they call it, um Z axis autofocus. That's interesting. So I didn't oh, no, know that it had that. It's only because I kept that web page open, just, just in case. I'm glad someone's reading it. <laughs> I knew I'd seen it somewhere. So hold on. So does that mean we have to use, is there like a two tree software then? No, it runs off Lightburn. Does Lightburn have that feature? I assume so. Apparently. <laughs> There's only one way to find out. That is true. When I come around this weekend, we're lasering your kitchen doors and your new units. And then you can figure out the speaker while you're waiting for the 12 hours it's doing it. Yeah. Well, that's after we've laid the new floor in his office. <laughs> Let's just hope some parcels don't turn out next week, then. Well, there's a, there's a potential couple turning up, which is... Yeah. We've actually got a pile of stuff there ready to go. Yeah. There should be one coming in a big wooden crate. Could be two coming in a big wooden crate. Yeah. And we've just unboxed a big wooden crate. <laughs> yeah, um, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that, that sucked. I didn't enjoy doing that, by the way. Like, lots of crates. Yeah. Seems to be the thing at the moment, doesn't it? They're sending everything in these big wooden This is crates. This is the problem, right? The problem is, is that as your machines get bigger, there is a logistical issue with... Phys My camera keeps flickering. Yeah, it keeps going on and off for just like a fraction of a second every now and again. Does it? Like it's blinking. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was the camera or me blinking. Look at that high definition. You can even see all the muck on my t shirt. <laughs> all right, fine. Well, we'll see Either if it does it in shoulders. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll have to watch that back at some point. Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, cardboard boxes just aren't cutting it, are they? For all these I big things. Well, well what's ridiculous that above a certain that... price point, they need to make sure it's protected when it's shipped. Yeah, what's ridiculous is that inside of every single one of those crates, there is still a cardboard box. Well, the one we did yesterday was a crate 
a cardboard box and then another box. Yeah. It's like Russian dolls. Well, that's it. Because all these, like, Core XYs, they can't be assembled at home, really, can they? Well, resin printers as well. They've, they've got a yeah. ship as the size they are. And they're getting bigger and bigger. Mm. And the problem is, is as you say, Carl, it, there is a reality that people don't want kit machines. They want things like the bamboo, where you get it out of the box and it just works. Yeah. Which and, is all and, well and good, but the box has to be big enough to fit the thing in it that's supposed to work. And my God, and that's then not shipping easy. can go through the roof as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, even more so for like us lot in the UK. Like it, it's crazy now, isn't it? Obviously, since leaving Brexit, kind of got its own costs now. But like, like you say, like people want the bamboos and they want the the K ones and the K one maxes and the quiddies and all them, and they're already assembled. You know, yeah. is the market is the market for like vorons and rat rigs going to slowly fade away? Well, we've potentially got coming in the next week or two three big crates. Yeah, at least. And to be clear, that isn't us moaning about the uh, about the printers that we're getting. We're no, still very... but um, with these big crates, a lot of the time it's a two man job getting them open and getting them up yeah. on the table. Yes, that is true. A That's... job that the delivery driver seems very disinterested in. Like, yeah, it's no, my fault that his time. entire I mean, job is delivering heavy else, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of times where I've said to a delivery driver, can you help me get this in the garage? And he's looked at me like I've just said, can I come in your house at Christmas and just have a little piss on your kids? Like, he's, he just looks at me and goes, well, I didn't order a big thing, so why am I helping you? I was like, well, it's so, not my fault so that your job form, is to pick up everything and take them to people's houses. I the didn't tell forms, you to get the this P13 job. is so heavy... When we'd done the live stream and it was on the table, I had to go round there so the two of us could move it off the table to put it onto the shelf. Yeah, that wasn't ideal. It's like you can't even move that printer on your own. So, like we've got the Quiddy Max. I was watching the Quiddy Max Free. I was watching yeah, a video yeah. today and it's like 280 by 280 by I think 300. But the actual yeah. size of the printer is over 700 by 700. <laughs> it's huge. Right. It's huge. And, you know, and that's their middle size one. Yeah. And then the Max, uh, whatever, it's, is on a different level. It's like nearly two and a half foot wide. Yeah. Because if it gets 320 by 320 by 400, or maybe 350. Just trying to see what I need to do to make this. Oh, there's grub screws. Oh, okay. One would assume that this must go at a fairly fixed height. Like there. Here you go, like the Quiddy Free Max. Max Free is 553 by 553 by 600. And it weighs 25 kilograms on its own. I dream uh, with the printers that we've had up until this point. I dream of the day that one of weighs picking that up on your own and moving it around. Yeah, yeah. do that with and one end. It's three two five squared print area, which I think is pretty much what people want for the most part. I would say, I'd say that's near enough. That's the kind of print volume that people that people need to be useful. Now, don't be wrong. The droid builders would disagree with that and they'd say they want 500 by 500 or whatever. And there's absolutely and people that's out have there a who need... Use for printing an R2 dome. Exactly. M most people do not need to print a full-size... R2-D2. That's the air gap, 2 mil. Okay. What is? Okay. Anyway, um, right, so we've got laser on here, so I just need to turn this around because we've still just got to figure out how exactly it is. It, it, it's the... like on the bamboo sites. Whenever, obviously, they've got three different models now, and always the question is, when's the bigger one coming? Mm. It, which isn't an easy question to answer for the most part, I would say. Yeah. 
and and that's it people want bigger in that context and if it's price matched against like a voron is voron going to fall away probably not I don't. I don't think Voron will fall away. Not at all. But it'll, it'll attract all. two very different people because the bamboo, yeah. you know, will take out the box, plug it in. The yeah. Voron you're always going to be building. Yeah. Yeah. Print. Absolutely. It's meant to be the end of the year. I heard October too. I've yeah. I've heard just. I reckon shipping's probably a couple of weeks before Christmas. I think I heard. But we'll see. But again. What size are they going to go for and how big is the crate going to be? Not easy questions to answer, I suspect. No. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but every time you get these crates, it means you have to go to the dump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the geezers at my dump, every single time I go in, they're like vultures. It's, it's not, Second they it's see not me, like, what's, uh, it's what's not that like? games, it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very different. There's so many times. So I took, like, I took the Hydra um, to the dump. Was it safe to take it to a dump? Well, so as it was, I, I had actually, I had, so I haven't thrown away the laser head because <laughs> I knew someone would dig that out and end up blinding themselves. <laughs> or, um, or like, you know. Where you live. Yeah. So I was just like, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let that, uh, not broke, just don't work. Yeah. yeah they don't work. Non-functional. And then he just said, oh, what do you reckon, uh, what do you reckon it would take to get that working, mate? And I was like, and if I dog? knew that, it would be working. <laughs> this is the rubbish tip. This is where rubbish goes. This is rubbish. This is the like, graveyard oh, technology. I'll have that. Right, okay, fine. You can have it if you want, mate. And you'll see him in the paper in a couple of months. House caught on fire by 3D printer. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to the dump tomorrow to take free resin printers. <laughs> well, they, they are, are still like they are the original broken, though. Yeah. The high tree Kirin, which is the only thing I've ever used it for, is to print bases for Warhammer because it's all it can be trusted to print. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the other one is a. Tech 100, which is just why the other two are going, that one can go as well. So, what do you, as James mentioned this, are you planning to get the Voron working and the Rarig working eventually? Look, I they're not broke, they're just, just in a state of upgrade. Continuous upgrade. Yeah. The Voron, yes, I absolutely do. Um, there's one thing left with the Voron. Um, the, uh, the you have is... done a load of upgrades to it, haven't you? I've done yeah. a load of upgrades to it. So I bought a bunch of all aluminium parts for it. I did an X-axis upgrade. I did the Z-axis upgrade. I've done, um, I've got new X-axis bars on it. Like I've done, I've done quite a lot to it. And um, and the other thing I did was because my probe was burning out, um, I did the clicky probe upgrade. The problem is, is that the probe upgrade that I did, I left the probe that there's like a probe carrier, let's call it, that's actually attached to the tool head that stays there all the time. And mine is too high. So I need to take the whole tool head off, readjust it up. And then, uh, and then I'll be able to. And then, in theory, it's print. In in theory, it's 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 ready to go. Um, so hold on, I'm just looking to see if I can figure out how the hell, or where the hell. But you got going. carried away upgrading the uh, what is it? The SVO five, isn't it? Yeah, I'm halfway sort of through that, that as well. So the tool heads. Yeah, the tool head's all on for the SVO5. Um, I need to finish a little bit of the wiring. Uh, I need to finish a little bit of the wiring. It's now got an AC fit... heated bed, all the belts. Yeah, I've got, yeah, so I've done a yeah, I've done a lot of upgrades to that. Is your They're camera mounted to the desk, moving up and down every now and again? No. You broke the four on James. Well, I mean, it's a kit, and it did work, so. <laughs> It's not that the problem that I was having with the Voron was, um, oh, it is moving up and down, isn't it? Is the leg touching the desk? 
No. The tripod leg. No, it's not when I'm touching it. It's um, it's the picture jumping. I might have, have a look at that. Um. All right, sorry. I'm just trying to figure out how this last. So. The implication is that this goes like this, which must mean it goes like that, I guess. And that means that. Okay, if you say so. I don't feel like it. No, it doesn't go on like that. Just trying to find the right screws to go in the right holes. Who's going to get the first laser tattoo from you guys? Well, Mr. Uh, Jones, I offered, you and James wouldn't do it. I offered and James wouldn't do it. That, no, I wouldn't do it. I, I, I wouldn't agree to it either. I think it'd be quite... Uh, I'll tell you now, there's been multiple occasions where we've been very, very close to not just getting strikes, but getting knocked off of this platform. And I reckon if we start going on there burning each other's skin, I reckon that might be the final nail in the coffin for them to go, do you know what? This isn't for you guys. I did say it didn't even need to be filmed. I just wanted to do it. Well, if it's not even filmed, what's the point? Because I just think it'd be cool. He is polo. Pololo. I ain't got polio. <laughs> I think that's been cured in the UK for many years. Yeah. Last person I can remember having it is Ian Jury. Yeah, Jesus. You've done what to chicken. You've I'll done what to chicken. chicken. Oh, uh, polo is chicken in Spanish. So he's saying he's saying you're chicken. Oh, I wanted to do it. It was James who wouldn't do it. I don't know why we're suddenly making it seem like I'm the one who's being irrational. <laughs> <laughs> I see it on a I'm video. Saying, I'm I not going to on a YouTube video and I wanted to do it. Or something onto your flesh because apart from the fact that it's super illegal, it's also <laughs> a ridiculous thing for a human being Why to is say. illegal? To insinuate that somehow that makes me chicken. I don't, I don't yeah. really Why understand. Why would it be illegal? <laughs> Why is it illegal? Yeah. Because you're in the care of the community. And it'd be burning a disabled person. Yeah, I, I don't think branding people is acceptable anymore. No, it's frowned upon in most cultures, actually. I think following like the 1940-ish era, branding people wasn't good. Smell, I don't, yeah, I don't think it smell like bacon. No, I've been on a diet, I'd smell like rice. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I smelled like bacon. Yeah. <laughs> I miss smelling like burning bacon. yourself all the time. Yeah, yeah. just to get just to get the just contact get, high. Just get a fix. Maybe that's a new diet we could create. You lazy yourself. You get the smell of food, which then gets rid of your appetite. Be a good sell of that. There'll be some lunatics that are believe it as well. Just doing this last bit, and then we should be ready to go. We could easily laser me, laser me with a laser picker. It's what? Sorry. We could easily laser part me with a laser picker. Yeah, that's uh, a laser. That, well, that's an IR, so I don't actually think it would. Oh no, you'd have to have the laser picker for. <laughs> yes, I suppose. You could make a case for the laser pecker four in that instance. <laughs> yeah. 
But what do, you, what do you plan to do with it? Wow. Funny story. You're going to laugh. <laughs> but it all started out. You're going to call someone. One yeah. of the two. <laughs> it started off as, a, you know, a bit of a joke. No, I saw a video on it on YouTube. I think I seen that video as well, and he got a lot of hate for it. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. I reckon we'd have a lot of people reaching out, making sure that Mike knew like helpline numbers. There'd be a lot of people I've lobbing got, accusations at me. I've got a friend who's gone over to um, uh, whereabouts has he gone? I think it's near Amsterdam. He's gone over there three times and had scarification done. Right. Where they basically just cut your flesh off in a pattern. Oh, yeah. sacrificial tattoos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've seen it. Oh, it's weird, that stuff. But one of them, he's got a big bear paw print on his leg. He hasn't even got a bear. <laughs> Not even a teddy bear. Well, I don't know if he's got a teddy bear, but he's never had a real bear. It, like, it's it's mad, he's, though. He's never it? been like a fan of bears. He breeds geckos. I would have thought a gecko print would have been much more... Smaller. Well, no, more in line with what he does. It, it's all this weird like stuff. They might have, I could understand it. They have all these little beads put onto their skin now and everything, yeah. don't they? Like, is, is it the Body modification pad? now, that's, that's what it's called, word. though, isn't no, it? Branding it's not, is it's still not... a thing. Branding is still a thing. You can go and get branded. It's, it, it hurts enough when I burn my finger from cooking. I couldn't imagine someone shoving a bit of metal on me that's steaming hot. One thing I will say, though, is the older I've got, the more painful tattooing has become. Like yeah. When I was younger... Your, la your last one, you weren't happy about your last one. No, no, no. I've never sat there and sweated with pain and longing for it to be over before yeah. for three hours. Yeah, under my under my arm, up to my armpit killed. Yeah, I bet armpit does hurt. I haven't got it, armpit. Oh, I've got right up to the armpit, but not it, actually in it. It... it it it's hard it's like your skin's burning but it's not well the last one i had done where i was really in a lot of pain was the back of my knee yeah I can, yeah well there's a lot of nerves isn't there there's, there's, like, a, there's a lot of everything there it was really bad <laughs> there's, there's like certain parts on your arm when i've had done that have been fine then they go like a millimeter down and it's like oh that fucking hurts that so i found all my arms okay um, but then I was a fair bit younger when I had them done. What I've noticed is it is more painful. Yeah. The older I've become. Maybe our skin gets tougher as we get older. But it thins, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I wouldn't <laughs> expect that to actually affect how much the tattoo hurt. But, but when she was doing that while that was behind me knee, it's for me, sort of Achilles up to behind my knee. And she put it on. She went, do you want me to do it a bit smaller? Because it does go up behind your knee. I went, nah, it'd be all right. <laughs> Instantly regretted that decision. <laughs> uh, it's whenever I, a tattoo I, I, artist... On, I never breathed. I never breathed for 30 minutes. Yeah. And you get when the When a tattoo artist suggests something and you go, no, no, that'll be fine. And they look at you as if to go, I've done this more than you have. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was the same tattoo. Well, I went now. I went, Will you tattoo the palm of my hand? And she went, Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> she was the one you did your uh stormtrooper for, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, okay, and we are done. An hour 10 with a little Not bit bad, of considering how many boxes it was made up of. Yeah, so let me just... Oh, here we go. Right, so let me just show you guys where we are at. So, flip, no, that's all right. That's so there is an end stop at the front. There is an end stop over here. So this is where it will home. My zeros and zeros are here. Everything else appears, as far as I can tell, to be screwed in, except for these screws over here, which I realize I haven't screwed in yet. So admittedly, we're not quite finished because uh... 
it looks it looks, it looks, it looks a really one thing that two trees do well actually is when they do their lasers they do really make them quite like you know the cables are protected quite well because on my older one they have like a cable protection on it and that looks yeah see they've there's, there's a lot of what i would say there's a lot of maturity in this design so yeah. there's yeah, drag this chain cables the ones we've had. yeah there's a built-in air assist the air assist is already built into the side of this there's already synchronization belts on the front on the on the left and right there's a tensioner on the x axis so you can tension that belt as well like there is a lot of maturity that's gone into yeah. this there is as we've already said there is the fire alarm on this as well there's also the emergency stop on this um so there's a, there's a, there's a lot of extra features and extra things on this that have been missing on machines up until this point so let me just pick this up slide this in so what i need to do here is just zip tie these up Just some cables in the front here that I just want to zip tie yeah. out of the way. And that's like like the like the arm um, stat that you did the review on. I got one, and because they didn't have any protection on the cables, they'd snag now and again. Yeah. So when you were looking at it and you, you set it off to do its job, and you, you turn around and then you look and it's like it's trapped because yeah, it, it's just it's snagging in a hole. Yeah, I actually burnt my charger for one of my drills. So we have here the power cable for this, which plugs in there, plugs into this, which immediately turns all of that on. And then we also have the air assist here. just the cable goes over there like that lay this down here it's got some nice sort of rubbery feet on it no i've got the secret labs chair but not the desk i just need to grab a another kettle cord plug that into this about to find out if this is one of the power supplies for our uh, lights that didn't work. Yeah. I actually could do with getting a new secret labs chair. I've had this one probably nearly five Ooh, years. That's not a loud air assist. So it's definitely working. I can feel that on the back. But the Falcon's air assist that was, was loud. really loud. But this, I don't know if you can hear it isn't that bad yeah really isn't that bad so it's got like really wobbly rubbery feet on it so when you put it down like it i suppose it's an anti-vibration thing but so that goes on there like that so there we go that is that is the machine together looking at the desk but the desk of theirs is expensive oh the secret labs ones oh if yeah they are a nice office that didn't get resin and stuff everywhere and paint and stuff like that i'd have i'd have the secret labs desk it's nice but oh, they are well yeah they are expensive everything in here just gets abused your camera leg must be touching your desk or something because when you put it's, something it's down not, the it's not the camera leg it's literally it's something to do with the uh it's something to do with the connection so i'm just gonna stick for now i'll just stick this bit of cardboard on here because i just want to do a quick engraving
Oh, bloody hell, we've got a thunderstorm starting here. Oh, it was belting down here. Literally for an hour before we started this stream. Shows how often I check the weather. I only know because I had to come out here when I got really wet. You see, last week oh. in LA, they had an earthquake and a hurricane hit, like within the space of like 12 hours. Nice. Nice luck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. I got to say that there's nothing I like more than having a thunderstorm while I'm in bed. It's because I, I have the windows open every every night anyway. My dog, oh, he just squeals at them. My my dog pays no attention to a thunderstorm whatsoever. But if the ad the sky advert comes on telly, she goes ballistic. <laughs> she what? hates the song. She hates the music on it. She goes ballistic yeah. as soon as it comes on the telly. She's probably seen the price of Sky Charge. Well, I don't know why that'd make her angry because I have to pay it. Oh, so bad. Just get angry every month when the bill comes in. Still 1 0, though. Yeah. Right. So, speed. Right. So, I suppose the question is then is on this laser, how the hell on here do you tell it that it's got? Like an auto Z thing. Well, good question. Let me I open don't it know. I don't know how you tell it that it's got that. Let me have a look. James, that's the sort of thing you buy, but you don't say how much it is. You just have it delivered and just say I've got a new computer desk. There's loads of things I'll buy, and I'm never ever ever mention how much things are. You just have a look and see. See, this is implying that you should be using laser GRBL, which I haven't used before. Oh, light burn instruction. Here we go. So this is finally... In this manual, we finally have a list of materials, the speed, the power, and the passes that you want for engraving and cutting. This isn't going to be an exhaustive list, but I have lost count of the amount of times that, frankly, if you're new to laser engraving, I, you just don't know where to start. And it's really annoying. Right, hold on. So, autofocus on Lightburn, James. Yeah. It says, after framing your design, right-click in the design and select autofocus. This moves the laser to the point that executes the Z-focus function to focus the laser. So, I... Hold on. So, I frame my design. And then right-click on it in the middle of the design on light burn and then i right click in there it says yeah right click in the design and select auto focus well i don't have that so okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an option on mine oh, let's God. see if it says in here how you do it hold on that's adjustment of the eccentric nuts Auto focus. Auto focus. Just looking if it so if I click find my laser and I tell it to scan. See interestingly, 
I can hone it if I say that it's on com five, but otherwise doesn't let me um it doesn't so, find it in the auto discovery. So I've got a couple of little bits just to finish painting on the Ecto one. So we may be filming the video for that this weekend. Um and at the minute I'm testing some resins and deciding what I want to print next. Something that doesn't take four months, really. So That's no minis. I've done. No minis then. Probably for a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually printing a uh, Star Trek Picard bust at the minute, testing some resin. Nice. Do you see the um, Do you see the Spider Man one that uh, Focus Mint released a couple of weeks back? I've actually got two Focus Mint ones queued up. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen the Spider Man one. It, you've seen it. I sent you the picture of it, James. It's so nice. It's like it's sat on a wall. You know where he's sat on the wall, leaning against it. Yeah. Right. Really nice. Remy glasses. I'm currently doing um, butcher bust. Where's Gandalf? And Mammon bust. Where's Gandalf? Gandalf is actually in the studio where James is on some shelves yeah. behind the camera. Watching him. Judging. It's not that loud, to be honest. It's working. This is only on cards. So this is going at 8,000 millimetres and 50% laser. 50% power, sorry. The air assist is on. I'm not currently using the automatic Z adjust because it looks like you have to set up a macro for that. So, um, so I don't want to play about with that too much right now. But I mean, that is going. I actually selected cardboard as well rather than cards. I don't know if there's a difference. Yeah, that's no, good. It's not. It's different, isn't it, from him? Yeah. Is that the Miles Morales one, is it? Yeah. You can engrave on a pebble, apparently. A pebble? Apparently. Oh, you can do some of the pebbles around your water feature. Yeah. yeah. Electroplate. So the things you can engrave are plywood, acrylic, leather, electroplated coating, powder coating, anodized aluminium, stainless steel, density board, pebble, plastic board, and cardboard. Well... For plywood, for cutting, it goes up to seven to eight millimetres. And then acrylic, it goes up to six millimetres. But that's just in this book. I heard it engraves on skin. Okay. If you want to come around and try it, man, that's your business. Oh, it's doing it. What are you engraving? That comes out pretty good, to be honest. Like, that's 8,000 millimetres um, a minute. And What, what are you engraving? Cause... So I'm doing the Honey Badger logo. Okay. So that's 10% done. Oh, it's only three minutes in, though. That does imply that it's going to take half hour to do that. Maybe we'll let it do the Honey Badger. Maybe we'll let it do the logo bit where it actually says Honey Badger 3D print and paint and then we'll stop it because that'll only be about 10 minutes. I am going to say, though, it's probably one of the first lasers we've done that's actually worked straight away after being powered up, really. 
Yeah, as I say, I've not, I've not yeah, touched yeah, to this fair, automatic leveling thing. Mistakes we've made. Yeah, I mean, again, I've not, I've not touched this automatic Z leveling thing yet. There's a macro you have to create. Um, yeah. And I don't know how to do that, so I need to sit down and figure that out. Um, but like, it's doing the job. It's a nice looking machine, to be honest. I've given. I would actually say this. It's the nicest going... looking laser we've had. Yeah, I would actually say that this could go quite a bit faster than it's going now. So at the moment, it's going 8,000 millimetres a minute. I reckon you could put this, perhaps leave it at 50, and you could probably go up to 10 or 12,000. And it would and it would be going like the clappers, but it would actually, I think, well, that's actually it. quite good. Yeah, with a 20-watt laser. Yeah. Power, hasn't it? So That's the thing, right? You see, the thing is, is it's not great for your laser to run it at 100%. You're no. better at running it around 80% and just slowing the speed a little bit. Yeah. Um, so when it's doing stuff like this, so this is now 20% in five minutes. Should we see if the emergency stop works? Why not? It does. So, so interestingly, that away. emergency stop kills everything except for the um, except for the air assist because obviously the air assist is powered by a different um, by a different thing. But so it's um, still uh, blow blow air onto a fire. It will still blow air. It will still be blowing air through the air assist because the air yeah. assist is controlled completely separately. Yeah. But it turns off all the power and all the fans. So, and that's the first time it's worked. Yeah, straight away. Oh, hold on. Let me put the camera. Back you have to pull it back out. Here we go. So, it may not look like much, but that—that's pretty good, actually. For cardboard and for stock settings, probably a bit close. I would, I would say it's probably a little bit too close. And I would say that um, it needs to, uh, it probably needs to go a little bit faster than that because that felt a little bit slow for just engraving on card. But again, you can make the writing out. It's just a scrap bit of card that was laying around. So look, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy with that. Just unplug this, um, unplug this from here. I'm really it's happy with how that went. It was about, I mean, a person who was just doing it and wasn't chatting and doing other stuff. Um, could easily build that in 45 in 40 45 minutes, right? That was pretty easy to put together, and this is as complete a kit as really you could ask for. Now, again, bear in mind that we've also got the um enclosure piece to um to assemble as well, but that's just a foldable fabric box, so you yeah. literally put the sides up, this goes inside. You plug. I don't know where you would plug in the fan, so I'd be interested to have a look so, and see where that goes. So I was um, looking again. So the fan on the enclosure actually goes into um, is it a JTS connection? Yeah, and then that connects to a uh, socket on the outside for you to plug into from the mains power. Right. Okay. So that. So I don't necessarily have an issue with that. The thing to bear in mind is that means that if you've got the air assist, you've got the laser and you've got the extractor, you now have three mains plugs that you need to be able oh. to run that whole kit. Yeah. Which, all right, that's fine. I would challenge... If you're somewhere that, like we are, where we've pummeled plug sockets all yeah. the way around the wall. I mean, if you just put a multi-plug in the wall, a few, if you put a fused multi-plug in the wall for this... I would challenge you could run this off of a fused multi plug. These aren't these aren't drawing loads of power. They it's only really the laser are. when it's on. Even then, I bet you it's not. I bet you it's not drawing a lot of power doing that. See, the, the, there's anyway, be a so way. Look, I'm I'm really happy with how that went. I would again with with the so I would have said you could put a slightly beefier power supply on this 
and then you could have plugged the air assist directly into the uh, into the main board, and you could have had a uh, a little JST out at the back. Yeah. That again meant you could just plug the fan in for the extractor. So I do feel like you could have run all of that off a singular power supply, but that's a minor frustration more than anything else. Like it's not it's not a big deal that um, that that's sort of that that's something that you'd want to uh, that you'd want to play about with. Yeah. It's got more safety features than you would normally have. So because you've got that enclosure, because you've got that extraction, you've got the flame detection, you've got this front-facing guard, as well as this guard here on the uh, on the front of the laser as well. So you haven't you're more safe than normal. Um, I'm going to get that automatic Z adjust working because frankly, not having the right Z adjust is again something that a lot of a yeah. lot of lasers suffer from, so it'd be really good to get that working. Um, and yeah, I'm really, I'm really impressed. I'm really happy with how that went together. It was a nice quality kit, really was. There was, uh, you know, it looks quite nice. All this sort of anodized red and anodized red on here, and the black, and this nice thick honeycomb. These are immediately really useful. These sort of these, um, these, these pins to hold stuff down. I'm impressed. I'm impressed with how it went together, and I don't normally like lasers. <laughs> so this is the first time I put one together, and I can actually see myself using this for practical stuff and being like, "Yeah, this isn't this isn't objective garbage." Like I can actually see this yeah. working and being something that we'd wanna that we'd want to use as part of as part of projects. So anyway, that's an hour and a half of me chatting and Mike and, uh, and Mike and Carl as well. So we'll call it an evening there. Thank you very much, everybody who joined us. Thank you very much for everyone who donated as well. It all massively helps the channel. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to pick up your own, there is a link in the video description. That link is not an affiliate link. So if you want to buy one, buy one. If you don't, don't. But if you use that link, we don't get anything from it. It's just it's just a link that's there. So feel free to use it if you want to. Um, thank you for joining us. We'll catch you on the next video. Happy printing. Bye all.